Good morning. This is Mike Mazzalongo for BibleTalk.tv. Have you ever noticed that Jesus spoiled every funeral he attended? Whenever Jesus was at a funeral, the person they were mourning came back from the dead. For example, Luke tells of a woman who was about to bury her only son when Jesus felt compassion for her and brought the man back to life. Luke 7, 11 to 17. In Matthew 9, 18, Jesus comforts the man who had lost his daughter by returning her to life and the arms of her father. And in John, we see Jesus bringing Lazarus back from the grave, even after he had been in the tomb for four days, John 11, uh, 38 to 40. As a matter of fact, Jesus spoiled his own funeral by resurrecting three days after he was pronounced dead and carefully buried. It seems that Jesus simply doesn't do funerals, and his reaction to them teaches us some important facts when it comes to death. First, Jesus can overcome death, his and yours. The repeated examples of Jesus' defeat of death is God's way of reassuring us that Jesus does have this power, has used this power, and will use this power on our behalf. Number two, only dead people live in tombs. You don't have to live in your tomb because with Jesus you have life. We should therefore live like people who are going to live forever, not like people whose final stop is the grave. And number three, God wants to resurrect you. The entire plan of God throughout history has been that ultimately he will resurrect you through Christ. Have a little faith. Stop worrying about what could go wrong. God won't forget or make a mistake. He will accomplish what he has set out to do since time began. Just remember, when you make your final arrangements, invite Jesus to your funeral. That's all for now. I pray you have a blessed week with confidence that Jesus will be there to welcome you in the end. Discussion questions number one. What passage of scripture do you want read at your funeral? Why? Number two, formulate a prayer that you would make if asked to pray at a Christian friend's funeral. Number three, what words of comfort would you say to the relatives of someone who died but was not a believer?